Monday, the 7th of January, 2019. It's the first time I've said 2019 this year, so I'll have to wish for that. And as usual, I've called out of Meningi, and I'm on my way to Kingston. It's about, well, it's about midday, and I haven't been down to the block for ever so long, way back in October last year, I think. And last night I had a bit of a nightmare and thought that I was sleeping while I had it. I imagined that when I got down there, the caravan doors had all been prized open, everything had been stolen and strewn about, uh, uh, and the whole place had been vandalized by, by somebody. So I'm praying that my dream doesn't come true today. I'm going down for uh, today, kill some weeds, look around, um, spend the night, do some stargazing. Although it's going to be a bit overcast tonight, I believe. <clears throat> and then uh, coming back on Tuesday afternoon, back to Adelaide on Tuesday afternoon. Today being Monday is a non-eating day for me, so uh, it's easy. Although I do have coffees, and I've just bought a coffee at Meningi. So, see you there. It's uh, 3.37 on Monday the 7th of January, and I've just arrived at the block and remember I said I was worried my nightmare about the place being broken into everything's fine um, none of the doors have been smashed or anything the caravan cover is very dirty it's because I put a rather cheap camouflage uh, net on the top of it to hide it from us and it's kind of staining the top but in a way I'm not sorry about that because uh, it will disguise it to some degree you know dirty is better than bright yellow and um, I'll just show you here, the, uh, the platform's fine. Um, I just had a little walk up there to see, everything's fine. I mean, I'm pretty amazed that, um, you know, I was wondering whether how much cracking the wood would have, got, you know, would have undergone since last I was here, but it's all, I don't see any cracks in the stairs, you know, in the wood of the stairs or in the banisters. And I've put this bit of plastic to cover the floor from, uh, from the beating sun. But if you look, just even look at the sides here, there's no sign of cracking here. And even my little um, bird watching book platform is, is fine, it's nicely sealed. I might bring some sealant up next time. But it's a lovely cool afternoon, I've just arrived. I'll unpack and then take a walk to the bottom of the next bench. And there's the beautiful seaside up there. So you can see it's a bit breezy today. So you can get your white horses on the water but it's a welcome breeze because it's nice and cool um, okay see you later okay, it's about seven o'clock in the evening down at the block and I'm actually standing at the end of our road this road of ours is called Ocean Road so that's Ocean Road up behind me there and it comes to an end here they put a fence across the road here and you can see, um, I do the weed control along the verges because you have to. So I've more or less got the weeds under control along the verges. So there's our gate there. Um, so I've just sprayed all of the weeds. And the kind of weeds you get here are this thing here, for example. Um, this is wild turnip and, and wild turnip and so on. And these, if you let them go, they go absolutely crazy. The latest weed to make its appearance is Cosmos. So here, for example, is a big bush of a white flowering cosmos. They're very pretty, but my gosh, do they, and there's a blue one there. But do they get out of hand? Have a look at this. This is on the neighbor's side. It's not on the neighbor's side, actually. It's on, on the road, which is closed off. These fences over to the right there somewhere. So I'm going to talk to the council, because my problem is these weeds now are feeding across onto my property where the native bush is. And so they're invading my property. So I want the council to try and do something about this. I don't know what they can do. Anyway, so I've had a busy time. I've been spraying weeds. Everything's fine at the caravan. It's going to be nice and cool this evening. I'm looking forward to a, a contemplative night. See you tomorrow morning. We've had this block of land for ooh, a long time, 15 years odd. And early on in the piece, we fenced this area here was completely just sand. And the kangaroos used to go through here. And so we, we fenced off a little area and tried to grow some plants in there. And just look at it now, you can hardly see the fence anymore. It's 
completely blocked off and this whole area here has filled in completely and look at the mun trees this is a this is a, a native ground cover and it grows on the sand and just have a look I thought I'd show you these are the fruit these are the fruit they're not quite ripe yet they're not quite ripe yet but um, they they are tasty they taste like apples they're beautiful um, it's, it's a native bush food it's called mun trees um, so unfortunately I won't get the benefit of them they're not quite ripe but in another two weeks they'll be absolutely gorgeous you can Put handfuls of them in your mouth. Uh, we put this bench here. It's a, a, a sleeper, a railway sleeper, on two poles buried in the ground. And because of the vicious sun and uh, uh, saline air, it started to crack. So we've covered it with this UV stable special plastic so that it doesn't weather too badly. But um, there's, a, there's a bit of a funny thing happened now because look what's happened. There's a hole in the side of it and I don't know if you'll be able to see. I'll try and zoom in on it. I don't know if you can see what's happening there. I'll go around. There's the hole. And let's see. There we go. The bees have made a hive underneath there <laughs> so now uh, we've got another problem the, the, the sleep is going to be fine but it's now a beehive so perhaps one day we'll have to get uh, somebody to remove them and I'm not sure that it's very safe to sit on it because uh, I'm allergic to bees and I might get stung so there's an amusing development for you it's actually quite late in the evening sort of after seven but it being daylight saving, um, it's just such a lovely evening. And uh, I'm standing up on the, on the bird watching platform, and you can see that the vegetation still has a green flush left over from winter. Uh, and come summer, it'll go a little bit more olive and brown, perhaps. And you can see the caravan is quite badly stained from a camouflage stuff I put on it but so this is a very special plant on our block it's called Luca Pogon which means white beard it's tiny white flowers with a little beard inside it's a white beard and then Parva Floris it's got tiny flowers Parva means tiny and it's it's produced fruit now at this time of the year so I've got this theory that um, the ripe fruit fluoresce white. Can you see the white fruit? And can you pick up the green fruit in the background? Maybe not. So it doesn't all fruit at the same time. Um, it fruits slowly. The, the, it, some get ripe and the others stay green so that it has a long, a long fruiting time which also means it's spreading its risks in terms of getting animals or whatever it takes these seeds. Mainly birds I'd imagine. Um, but if it's fluorescing these, can you see this one here for example is very very white and I'm going to give it to a friend of mine to see whether they fluoresce uh, under UV. I'm, f I'm collecting them at the moment so I've collected them. It's a bit tedious but I'm just collecting the ripe ones uh, to give him some and I'm also going to try and germinate them. And The problem with this plant is that you can't grow it. Uh, you can do what you like, you can take cuttings, you can take seeds, you can do what you like to the seeds. Um, it will just might just grow to about six inches high and then die. So it needs also it needs a, you to take some of the soil from underneath the plant because there's a special fungus that has an association which helps the plant to grow. So this is another aspect of um, this time of the year, January, down at Kingston. This is another plant on my block, our block. It's, I've been going on about. It's Exocarpus. Exo meaning outside, carpus meaning fruit, so it has a very weird arrangement. Can you see the pale, the pale colored fruits? It's got the fruit underneath, and then it's got the seed sticking onto the end of the fruit. Let's see if I can pick one. There you go, there. So this, the, the black part, the dark part, is actually the seed, and the fruit is underneath, hence its name, exocarpus. Very strange can eat these as well, they're rather tasty. Mm. 
not very sweet, sort of melony. I keep thinking, oh, well, that's, that's that, and then I'm coming across something else. This is Old Man's Beard, or Clematis. Um, the Clematis is the same one, well, it's not the same one, but it's the same genus as you get in your garden. And the seeds get this beard-like uh, fluff around them, and then they blow away in the wind. That's how they disperse, they wind disperse, so you can pull them off, and they, they wind disperse seeds. So it's called Old Man's Beard, and um, you can see the seeds in there. So Clematis, I've just been for a walk down towards the coast, down over this dune over that way there, so just down, down there, you probably can't see it from here, but um, I noticed a bush with covered in red berries over there, I just walked down and picked some, and it's our old friend, the African box thorn, so there's a spring right there, and the two African box thorn, which I introduced weeds here, um, covered in these large red berries and you can see why they spread because birds love red and these are the biggest berries I've ever seen on a box thorn uh, and so the birds eat them and then spread the seeds all over the place I'm not terribly concerned because um, they're not widespread they're dotted all over this block and they provide a very good protection for for little creatures and birds and things because they've got some really nasty nasty spines on them you know, cutting them out so they're real choice